Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a special breaking news at scale has hired a new CEO, Chris Lynch is the big news, and taking over Dave Mariano, who will be the EVP of technology. Uh, important because one, a CUBE alumni, and also uh, we've seen him at all the big data events doing amazing work in the cloud scale data market for many, many years. We're very familiar with at scale. Uh, both David and Chris Lynch, both CUBE alumni. Chris, great to see you, congratulations. New CEO of At Scale. Thanks, John. I really appreciate being here. So, um, we know each other. You've been on theCUBE before. You're formerly the CEO of Vertica, sold to HP. Other CEOs before that, also a venture capitalist at Atlas Ventures for that distinguished career. Why this move right now? What's attracted you to At Scale take over the helm from the co-founder who will be partnering with you on this? It's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm still asking myself that, but <laughs> I, I think what it comes down to is, uh, I met Dave years ago when I was at Atlas, and um, it didn't work out the timing for us to make an investment, but I tracked the company and what they were doing, and um, I left Accomplice a little over a year ago, and um, working with some companies out in the West Coast, I happened to be out here, and I reached out to Dave and said, hey, you want to grab dinner? Which we did, and um, by the end of the evening, he was like, you know, you should come help us really commercialize this and take it to the next level. They've been and on our radar. For, they've been on our radar for a while. Obviously, I mean, David at Hadoop Summit, I think three, four years ago, and he was formerly at Cloud. We kind of hit it off. Clearly, a big data um, visionary and also entrepreneur, but they had a unique model at that time. Hadoop was certainly viewed as, you know, the king of the castle for in big data at that time, but cloud scale wasn't on everyone's radar in the mainstream. They had a unique perspective. Has anything changed with the tech? Is that what's attracted to you? The scale, the piece of it? What's the, what's the secret sauce that, that got you enticed so, in this? So, so I am aware of the company's history. That's not what got me interested. Um, what got me interested is, I think that they're the only player today in, in the market that has a production product that can actually take customers from the data center to the cloud and do so transparently. And I liken it to what we did at Acopia when we virtualized file systems, and frankly, when we virtualized HTTP traffic at ArrowPoint. So the idea of an abstraction layer, a federation layer made sense to me. And um, you know, I, I, it, as a venture capitalist, I've seen the lack of adoption of big data workloads in the cloud. You know, and there's a $200 billion opportunity. I think these guys are uniquely qualified to take advantage of it. So that's really what drove me from a, from a business perspective. I see this opportunity as unique versus anything I've seen on either coast. You get a great reputation as an operator, also as someone who can manage and operate businesses and grow them. And ultimately, you had some great exits in your day. Vertica's well known in, in, in the history of tech for two reasons. One is it was probably the best deal HP ever, has ever done on acquisition value-wise. Also, it was before and during the whole Vertica and autonomy, autonomy acquisition, which is tr uh, billions of dollars. So, and they ended up throwing that away, keeping Vertica, and that became the flagship. So you've seen how companies can take it a wave and get in the right position. You've done that with Stonebreaker in the past, uh, founder of Vertica. Do you get the same movement here with this company? Is it the same playbook? What's different? Is it the same? What's the opportunity for this company? So, so I think the opportunity for this company is different. At Vertica, it was about executing against the excellent product that they had built in a known market they were targeted for. My vision for at scale is to move beyond the Data Lake Hadoop market and really take all the legacy warehousing vendors to the cloud. Cloud proof those solutions behind the firewall and begin to deliver those workloads in earnest to the cloud, transparent to the user, irrespective of the BI tool, whether the, the, the technology is behind the firewall, in front of the mm -hmm. firewall, and I think that's a game changer. Certainly we've seen on theCUBE and the big conversation in the industry has been hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, but if you squint through that those trend lines, it's really about integration, right? So you mentioned getting people to the cloud. How big is that right now from an action standpoint? Is it, is it uh, accelerating? Is it early stages? Where is the progress bar on companies yeah. accelerating to the cloud? It's, it's stalled, frankly, because there are thousands of app, tens of thousands of applications uh, in the Fortune 500 that the, the ability to take those applications and that data and move it to the cloud is it's on par with trying to operate, do heart surgery on a patient while they're running the Boston Marathon. So it's too difficult, it's too disruptive to a business, too risky. What we do is we create a federation layer 
that basically abstracts all that complexity from the user and makes that transition transparent. So to the user, they don't have to care whether it's behind the firewall, in front of the firewall, what cloud it sits on, mm -hmm. what analytic store you're drawing from, what BI tool, it doesn't matter to the user. So they, they've basically been able to separate those two things and that's going to allow people to scale and evolve into the cloud, right? Today, cloud is a revolution, not an evolution. It needs to be an evolution for Fortune 500 companies to take advantage of it. I got to ask you the hard question because ultimately at Amazon, they're kicking ass 10 ways from Sunday. Yeah. They're obviously the numbers are off the chart, even in public sectors just down there last week. You got Azure retooling, and essentially they're going to try to replicate the, the uh, economies of scale. I think they're going to have a hard time, but still, no, they're not going anywhere either. And you got Google changing the game, focusing on their core competencies and where they can differentiate. All that is potentially competition. So this company at scale, they definitely have tech chops, so that's, you know, we know the team there, so they had a lot of credit for that. But $25 million raised in their last round of funding, total capital date, 45 million. How are you going to compete? How are yep. you going to take this and commercialize this opportunity and not be drift with, but instead ride that wave? It's a terrific question. I actually think that one of the things that excites me about this opportunity, it's the first opportunity as an operator that I've had that I haven't been in the David Goliath thing. I actually don't think that any of those people are competitors. I think when at scale wins, BI vendors win, traditional data stores win, and the cloud provider wins, and ultimately the customer wins. So my view is all those companies you mentioned, if Google wants to be relevant in the enterprise, they need to get those big data workloads to their cloud, we can do that. We can continue to help Amazon do that. We can help Oracle Secure Cloud do that. We can help Microsoft do that. And all the time, we're future-proofing the legacy data stores of the Teradatas and the Oracles and the IBMs. So this is the first opportunity that I've seen where the game isn't to go disrupt and call out the competition. It's to work with all these people to drive workloads to the cloud in a, in a scale that hasn't been done before. So you don't have to unseat anyone. You just got to ride the cloud wave, pretty much. Yeah, we, we, have to, we have to demonstrate to these guys that we do what we say we, we do. Um, but my view is when we win, all those participants can potentially win. Awesome, how about uh, staff funding? You feel good that enough dry powder in there? Is there another round of funding on the horizon? Or <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I haven't even started yet, but you know, my expectation is that in this marketplace with my track record, raising capital or attracting capital will not be an issue. It'll be about figuring out the business model and making sure it's right and then investing behind that business model. So you have enough cash now, certainly do that. Um, talk about the Boston, California. You're going to stay in Boston, that's news. Company's based in California. You have a pedigree in Boston, certainly, in being a VC down there, but also you run businesses down there. There's yep. talent down there. Is there plans for a Boston expansion, a Boston uh, bi-coastal situation? What's their so opportunity the, there? So the company will remain headquartered in San Mateo and I'll take up residence here and I'll go back and forth. So my family's not moving, so I'll have a residence in Boston and one here. Um, but you can absolutely expect that I'm going to leverage the ecosystem that I've grown up in and we will have a significant presence on the East Coast. Awesome, Chris, final question, uh, machine learning. You guys were close to that for a long time at Vertica. You guys were doing some of the most cutting edge machine learning before it became super popular as it is now, as they call it AI now, but essentially, that was the beginning of the Commodore Store database which you guys pioneered. Speed and using data for competitive advantage. How is that now scaled up in the market now? How, how robust is it? How mature is it? How ready is it? And how does at scale take advantage of, of, that, of that growth? So, so I think that the world of data science in general has matured. Um, if you look at one of my proudest investments, a company called Data Robot, they are the leaders in automated machine learning and their business is growing triple digits every year. Um, the level of adoption is really only gated by practitioners and people to apply the technology to these business problems, mm -hmm. but it's gaining incredible momentum. Um, for us, I plan to integrate automated AI into components of our architecture, which I think makes it really a game changer. So, of course, we expect competition, um, but by the time that you know, they get you know, 100 miles behind us, you know, we're going to hit that, what's that button that you have in those Teslas <laughs> you guys drive out here? <laughs> Insane mode, and it'll be automated machine learning will be powering that. Uh, what's your impression of the marketplace right now? Is it, um, you know, obviously you're seeing global landscape 
You know, we see uh, the, the China situation going on in Asia, a lot of activity, a lot of growth outside the United States. Um, and obviously cloud, you're seeing region specialties. Any thoughts on how that's going to play into it? Or is it not relevant to you guys right now? What's, the, what's your thoughts on the global landscape? I mean, I think it, it's, it's relevant to everyone because I think it's what's driving valuations and this influx of money coming from these different places. I mean, if, if you look at the Middle East, you know, they're writing checks to any sort of tech company they can because they're trying to divest of what they know is, is a dead business, right? Um, so that's going to drive valuations. It's going to drive, in my opinion, um, a lack of discipline and, and bad behavior mm -hmm. as we've seen, you know, in 2000 and other times in 2008. Um, I think for us as a company, we're going to be disciplined yeah. and, um, you know, the fact that we can raise money and raise money attractive valuations yeah. isn't a reason to do it. If you have a business model fund, that's a reason to do it. So, you know, I don't think it'll be a distraction for us, but I think it will increase, you know, the amount of noise in all the key markets. And I think cyber, we've seen it, you know, AI for sure, um, IOT, Bitcoin, all these What's things. What's the most exciting thing in the data business that, as it evolves now to the center of value proposition that you see? And as the CEO now of that scale, that you're going to capture this? I think, I would say two things. In the, in the AI machine learning space, I think the fact that with democratization of data, you're now actually seeing people applying machine learning way broader in organizations and way deeper than ever before, and that's going to transform businesses, low-tech business as well as high-tech businesses. For us, I think that the real opportunity exists. It's a question of just taking yeah. these, le these legacy workloads and moving them to the cloud, and that's not a trivial task, mm -hmm. not just technically, but um, you always have to be sensitive to, to companies' ability to absorb technology. I think one of the challenges is, you know, you're, you're trying to transform a business that, you know, basically was informed as it developed in technology that was 1980. Well, Chris, congratulations on the CEO opportunity at that scale. Um, what can people expect from you? What, what uh, if you can uh, write the narrative of the first couple moves off the line of scrimmage here? What are you going to do? What's your order of business? What can they expect from you? Well, the first thing I'd like to do after I meet the customers and the employees and the par existing partners is go out and get two significant partnerships. I'd like to see a couple partnerships in cloud and a couple partnerships with the classic data store vendors. Um, so that's probably going to be my first mission to get that moving and. You know, we'll see how quickly it goes, but I think that's super important to do. Yeah, and certainly scale right now has been a big competitive advantage. Here's a company at scale five year, on their five year anniversary. Interesting gestation period for this big data world because Hadoop, you can look back even to the 2010 days, Hadoop was supposed to be the biggest thing since sliced bread. But what happened was the world became bigger and from a data, not just outside Hadoop. Gave these guys an opportunity and their architecture fits well. You see it scaling quicker, What's your, what's your, where's yeah. your point of scale? How do you see this so, scaling So I think, up? I think that the company, probably rightly so at the time, hitched their wagon to Hadoop. Um, but I think as you said, it's, it's really a subset of the data landscape and it's, it's actually a pretty small one. The real opportunity is in driving all the legacy data and analytics stores, those islands of analytics, and bringing them to the cloud. And that, like I said, I think is a you know, $100 billion business. Well, certainly great to see you and congratulations getting back at, at the chief position and you did a great job at Vertica, great journey. We followed you on that one, that was fantastic and then certainly watched it unfold, certainly at HPE, create a lot of value. Uh, congratulations and uh, at scale's got a good hire there, congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, it. this is theCUBE conversation here inside the Palo Alto studios, I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.